None other than Nicholas Reese, the Deputy Lord Mayor of Melbourne. He joins us from that beautiful city in the Man Cave right now. Two wonderful friends, none other than James Morrow from the Daily Telegraph, our colleague and friend here at Sky News, and the former Speaker of the House, Bronwyn Bishop, Queen, and carry over champ at all times. So, guys, I've had plenty to say. James, I'm going to start with you. A third of the kids in our schools are having trouble when it comes to reading, yet on television tonight, the Super Bowl and Taylor Swift was more important. Let's put media to one side. This is a... How many fire alarms do we need before there's a serious conversation that's not just about hurling more money? Because $300 billion got us the worst results in 20 years. Paul, this is a debate that has been going on literally for as long as I've been in Australia. I've been here for more than two decades, and there were fights back then about should we actually teach children to read properly with phonics and sounding out words, or do we do the cuddly sight reading thing that everybody knows doesn't work? And back then, it was controversial, and the left won, and they've won for decades now, and now we are seeing the price. It was amazing to me to hear on the radio and this morning when they were you know, but number one, the Grattan Institute, which is a left-wing institute, mm -hmm. left-wing think tank, came out and announced these findings. Great. So have we got some bipartisanship on this? But then, you know, finally you start to hear some experts say, oh, gosh, maybe we should do it. So the problem, though, is we've lost a generation, a generation at least to this. They're functionally illiterate. They can't read. They can't be engaged citizens. They, you know, not selling like an old guy, but they spend all their time just looking at pictures and reels on their phone. And it's, you know, this is not a recipe for a happy, healthy, productive society, Paul. Well, it, it, you yeah, know, it is frightening, Bronwyn, because for obvious reasons, we always want the, the next mob to be smarter than we were because they'll take the joint in a better direction. But we all know that the education system very heavily laced with a lot of things that weren't about our education, which is about turning them into the good little activists who at a moment's notice turn up in the right places and vote the right way. But still, how do we fix this? And, and how do we actually deal with the urgency of this? Because I feel no sense of urgency when we get this data, none at all. Well, you're quite right. It did start years and years ago, the argument between phonics, um, which is how I learned to read, uh, and um, this whole language thing. Well, the, the, although there's a recognition and phonics has been creeping back in, you've got a legion of teachers who've been taught to teach the other way. Are they going to retrain? Good question. But I think, and I've said this before, I think what we have to do is return to having teachers' colleges. Uh, not these wacko, worthless degrees that you get into from the university stream, but re reinstate dedicated teachers' colleges where you actually learn to teach and how you learn to discipline a class, how you, how you deal with the unruly, as well as learning mm. how to teach. Because unless you've got calm in your classroom, um, then you're not going to be able to impart wisdom or well, learning. This is the thing. I mean, the OECD has pointed out that, that, that discipline in Australian schools is one of the reasons why we are uh, falling as far as we currently are. Now, again, Nicholas, it's Team Red and Team Blue are in complete unison here, which is, for goodness sake, can somebody take care of the kids? But we have done mm. it a certain way, which is just to pump more and more cash, right? Um, all sides have agreed to that for $300 billion, and the results are worse, OK? So at some point, we need to recognise that we've got a problem. And I've got to say that if the statistics were about pick any other favourite topic that people like to talk about, and they were precipitously worse over 20 years, there'd be calls for a lot more action than the tumbleweeds we heard mm. today. Yeah, I agree with you, Paul. I think this was a, a landmark report today. It's a call for urgent action. Uh, Jordana Hunter at the Grattan Institute has done an extraordinary uh, piece of work here. The, the depth of the analysis um, is, is remarkable. And she's, she's called it out. She's looked at the evidence and she's found, you know, close to a third of schools are still teaching uh, discredited methods for teaching kids the most important of, of skills, how to read. Uh, and so we've got to say the reading wars are over. And, look, I agree with much of what James has said, but I really think we need to work, work past left and right or discipline of kids and just look at what the scientific evidence tells us about how kids best learn to read. 
and the, you know, whole of language approach is now discredited. We need to use phonics and direct instruction. And it was very pleasing to see that Jason Clare, the federal education minister, put out a statement today saying just that, reading wars are over, and they are going to link federal funding to proven approaches which are scientifically shown to work. So they're ringing the bell on well, some bad practices. But we can't pretend that discipline isn't part schools. of it, right? Now, we're not talking about bringing back the cane and giving the kids a few... It's just the OECD report has shown, literally, that we have some of the most disruptive classrooms in the in the world. Now, that is in part because we have a whole series of complaints set up that if a teacher turned around and said, Oi, James, stop it, Mum and Dad run up and complain, and then just we all know that the, the direct correlation between the discipline of the teacher and the behaviour of the kid has now been well and truly sort yes. of washed yeah. away by kind of this, this idea that it's not my Johnny, it's not you know, none of that stuff. Particularly when you're putting a very young uh, female teacher into a school with unruly kids. Correct. It destroys the confidence of the teacher, it, it, so she'll not progress, she'll work to get out. So that's why I say we need to have teachers' colleges back but where you know, they learn to actually teach. And, sorry, we yeah. do have to have a bigger talk about the Australian curriculum. And the Australian yes. curriculum is, I'm sorry, Nicholas, an absolute vehicle for propaganda. It teaches kids uh, not... I'm sorry, I hear you sighing, but, you know, anybody out there who's got kids or grandkids knows what they teach yeah. about Australia and they know what they teach about uh, our history and we know that it's not positive. This is why every Australia Day, you know, we're the only country in the world that says, oh, no, we can't have a celebration about anything because, you know, we're such a horrible country built on genocide and racism. That's what they teach. They've got these cross-curricular capabilities, you know, in environmental and indigenous studies and in Asia Pacific involvement that basically goes to undermine the curriculum and turn everything into politics. What Julie Gillard saddled this country with for over a decade has been oh, okay. a disaster. Sorry. And we should simply go yep. and we should buy and the curriculum down. off the shelf from a place sure. like no, Singapore I mean, James, yep, and yep. just simply you, run a curriculum if, that If you want works. to go down that wormhole, we can go... <laughs> So Look, we can go down. The, we can have a big conversation about the curriculum. We can have a big conversation about sure. discipline. But today's report was was a landmark report, which goes to the methodology which is being used in the classroom to Correct. teach kids how to read. Saying that the whole of language approach, the sight teaching but of words, sake, does not work. And the better methodology two, is to use phonics. Decades and direct instruction. That's what it was about, about the methodology. So you can you can riff till the night is for the light is long about all these other issues, so but that's today, not what today's Nicholas, report was about. are you saying it's a great day of celebration because a left-leaning institution has finally caught up with the reality oh, that what? phonics needs to be it's taught? Fair point. Two decades. Well, that's taken. So again, you're trying to put a political lens over everything. The, I mean... All right. Now, I mean, I you're trying to put a political in. lens over everything. And Jordana Hunter is one That's of the best uh, education researchers in the country. Mess. And this is a terrific report. All right. Uh, now, it's got nothing to do with left and right or no. culture uh, wars okay, guys, or guys, curriculum now, I or discipline. You know? Okay.